See the great passion play in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, just 48 scenic miles south of Branson, Missouri. Witness the power and majesty of the great passion play as a cast of hundreds bring to life the thrilling epic drama of the greatest story ever told. Hello, and welcome back to the world of religious theme parks. While this video is very much intended to stand on its own, it is in many ways a spiritual successor, no pun intended, to the video I produced a while back that covered a number of Christian themed parks. Since that time, I have been exposed to a lot of new places that represent other religions, often in the craziest form imaginable, and it's just, well, fantastic and strange. Now of course, in my initial video, a lot of people pointed out to me that I missed commenting on Heritage USA, a Christian theme park built by televangelist Jim Baker in the late 1970s. I know it must sound bizarre because the park was so prolific, but I managed to have not heard about it before producing that particular video. In the meantime, I've been keeping a list of other theme parks or experiences, whether Christian themed or otherwise, that I thought would make for interesting commentary and discussion. While I do very much intend for this video to be a follow-up to that exploration of Christian parks, I did want to expand the scope and dive into other interesting territory as well. This is going to include places such as Sui Teen, a Buddhist themed park with a number of very odd rides and attractions, including a pretty sizable water park inside as well. On the other hand, we'll explore complexes such as Hall Par Villa, where you'll dive into the depths of the Taoist afterlife, quite literally advertising itself as a one-way ticket to hell, in the most literal sense. We will also continue covering a variety of additional Christian-themed exhibits, and even one of the most bizarre proposals for a park that I've ever seen, focusing on turning the Jewish spirit into what has been described as the Jewish Disney World. So without further delay, let's dive right into the absolutely strange world of religious theme parks. So, previously, I've discussed the long-abandoned Holy Land USA, located in Waterbury, Connecticut. What made this place interesting was not just its history, but also that it was a small-scale walkthrough of buildings and scenes found throughout the Bible and in Jerusalem. However, thanks to Diggo and the comments of that video, he was able to provide me with a bit more context on similar attractions. The first place I would like to explore is the San Vivaldo Monastery, located in Monteoni, Italy. Named after Vivaldo, a Franciscan tertiary, a chapel was erected in 1325. A church would then be built in 1355, and the site would act as a typical Christian institution of its time. However, in 1500, a group of friars would commission the Sacro Monte, or Sacred Mountain, a series of buildings and geographic features meant to replicate holy sites in Jerusalem. From 1500 to 1516, 25 chapels were built though today only 15 remain, with three of them having been added in later years. These chapels were intended to serve locals as a form of going on a faux pilgrimage to Jerusalem, as that opportunity was too financially ambitious and often quite dangerous for regional residents at that time. Inside, visitors would find statues made of terracotta, creating scenes meant to display the Passion of Christ. While certainly not a theme park by any contemporary understanding, I feel that the monastery could be considered a precursor to themed entertainment that would come centuries later, in its attempt to immerse visitors into a recreation of Jerusalem's holy sites. However, many similar displays would become popular around this time, especially in Italy. Known too as a sacred mountain or a cavalry, these would be quite similar to what exists at San Vivaldo, consisting of a series of chapels built on a hill on which people could embark on a faux pilgrimage. Again, not really a themed experience as we understand it, but I thought that these were interesting enough to throw into the conversation. In a similar vein of displaying Christian iconography, another place I would like to briefly discuss is Desert Christ Park, located in Yucca Valley, California. It was established in 1951 by Reverend Eddie Garver on five acres of lands that he acquired the year prior. 
Garver was a friend of Anton Martin, an engineer and sculptor who created a statue of Christ, made out of steel reinforced concrete that he intended to place overlooking the Grand Canyon. However, after being denied his request to place the statue there, he came to an agreement with Carver that it would be placed on the hill overlooking his land. From there, Martin would move to Yucca Valley and continue creating statues, buildings, and dioramas for the park. While meant more as a leisurely space, meant to educate people on biblical stories, the website does describe it as a themed park, which I think is accurate and therefore fits into the theme of the video. Another mildly interesting Christian-themed attraction is the Great Passion Play, the anchor attraction of a larger Christian-themed complex located in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. The actual performance itself is a dramatization of the life of Jesus, though using so many actors and animals makes it seem expensive to run, so I suspect its heyday may be long behind it. Otherwise, a number of other attractions in the complex include an educational tour of a faux Jerusalem, a Christian art museum, and a Bible museum with some pretty historically significant and well-preserved copies of the text. The complex also features the Christ of the Ozarks, the second largest Jesus statue in the world, though still significantly smaller than Christ the Redeemer in Rio. While interesting without context, on my brief research of the statue, I discovered that it and the amphitheater in the park were commissioned in the 1960s by Gerald L.K. Smith a vocal racist, anti-Semite, and Holocaust denier. So while I think that the complex today is very much devolved from his influence, it was founded with problematic nationalistic intentions, which definitely changes the context. If you're interested in learning more information about this park, the website will literally provide you with a file from a 2006 promotional DVD, so that's pretty much how I view this place, stuck in that era even if still open today. The last small Christian exhibit that I would like to highlight is Noah's Ark in Hong Kong. The land was actually originally purchased back in the 1990s in the hopes that Disney would choose it as the location for their new Hong Kong Disneyland. However, that obviously never happened, and Noah's Ark opened in 2007. This museum-like exhibit is otherwise pretty straightforward, teaching the biblical story of the Flood. The building is surrounded by gardens filled with statues of animals, and inside there's even a few birds and reptiles. What I do find amusing though, is that the website claims that it's the world's first full-size ark, which must drive Ken Ham absolutely nuts, because both buildings look completely different. Also worth noting is that the builders of the ark, Thomas and Raymond Kwok, are Hong Kong real estate developers and evangelical Christians. In 2014, Thomas was arrested for bribing the Chief Secretary of Administration of Hong Kong, around the time the Ark was built. This is a component of a wider scandal to use the Ark as an excuse to remove local villagers from the land, opening up further property development in the future. So hopefully, this small selection of Christian-themed parks and experiences that I've just highlighted were interesting. They're certainly not as wild as the parks I covered in the video on Christian theme parks, but I think they're still worth commenting on. However, I did promise you some truly bizarre and exciting experiences, so let's move on to the really juicy stuff. Hey, just a quick favor, but if you made it this far, you can help the video out by hitting the like button. Videos like this take a ton of time to research and write, so leaving a like is a great way to support the channel. Moving outside of Christianity, the first place I would like to take a look at is Swaminarayan Akshadam, located in New Delhi. Named after Swaminarayan, a spiritual leader believed to have been a manifestation of the god Krishna in the early 19th century, this complex opens in 2005 as a Hindu temple, displaying different facets of Hindu values and culture. As you can see, the architecture is absolutely intricate and stunning, as you'll often find in temples like this. The complex offers a number of different impressive buildings with different functions, but what makes it so remarkable and fitting for this video is that it actually contains themed attractions. The first is the Hall of Values, a walkthrough exhibit using complex scenes and animatronics to portray various spiritual teachings. 
Second, a film focusing on the spiritual journey of a young Swaminarayan wandering India can be viewed in a large theater. Last, the complex actually features a boat ride, said Skruti Darshan. This is described as a cultural boat ride, taking riders through 10,000 years of Indian history. While it doesn't have any animatronics, at least as far as I can tell, it does consist of a series of figures and dioramas. There's not much out there that really shows the content of the ride, but it is quite intriguing from what little I can see. Before we move on though, I think it's also worth mentioning that the complex ends out each night with a fountain show. Using lasers, fog, and mapped projections on the building behind the fountains, this 24 minute show tells the story of a flower created by children, and the trials they face against the jealousy of the gods who attempt to destroy it. As someone completely unfamiliar with Indian history and Hinduism, much of what is offered in the complex is lost on me. However, I do find it remarkable, nonetheless, especially since I do think that it essentially constitutes a theme park. Moving on to something quite a bit stranger though, let's take a quick look at the planned concept for Plain, or Park of Wonders, a Jewish theme park proposed for Israel. In this video, developed as a pitch for the park, a grandfather wanders into a room with his grandson and scolds him for always playing on his tablet. The grandson retorts, asking him what he did back in his day before computers. His grandfather responds by taking out a book and talking about how great they are, highlighting how the one he is holding contains their family tree. Naturally, the grandson responds that heritage is boring. The grandfather blows dust off of the book, and it begins to magically reanimate antiques throughout the room. Suddenly, a futuristic smartphone appears, and the video only continues to get weirder. Grandpa, press on that. Step inside the Jewish Wonderland Park Plain, where thousands of years of Jewish values and heritage is brought to life Whoa. right before your eyes. Whoa. At the very center of the park is its heart, towering above all, Jacob's Ladder. Its significance is as it stands, reaching the sky, linking God and man, heaven and earth, and the spiritual to the physical, the entire <gasps> park. Okay, well, that's quite odd, and architecturally ambitious. We have to go there. Behold, the people of the book roller coaster, the high-speed thrilling ride that traverses pages and books of the Jewish people. At this point, the entire thing almost seems like a parody. However, when you think it can't become any more ridiculous... What's that? The Shabbat attraction lets the visitor experience the contrast between the craziness of modern life and the tranquility of Shabbat. Shabbat is the time for loved ones, personal reflection, and a connection to the Almighty. So, obviously this park doesn't exist, and I highly doubt that it will ever be built. While it very much feels like a joke, it was genuinely pitched by two rabbis in 2018, and contains five themed lands. These will be the world of spirit, the world of the Jewish nation, the world of society, and the world of time, in addition to the oasis, which looks to be this park's version of a main street. Again, it feels like a parody, but I think it takes the cake for most bizarre park, based on an Abrahamic religion. Moving on yet again to something radically different, the Madhu Dacian Temple in Taiwan is another architecturally significant complex that's quite intriguing. This attraction was brought up by Alejandro in the comments, and the site has been used to practice Taoism since the 17th century, but the current iteration of the temple was built in 1955. The dragon was later added in 1979. However, what makes this so interesting is that in addition to the architecture, the inside of the temple contains an exhibit built in 1982, portraying the 18 levels of hell. It's my understanding that this concept is an amalgamation of influences from Chinese mythology, Taoism, and Buddhism. However, what's being portrayed through a series of animatronic scenes here is a concept of a Chinese hell, where wrongdoers are punished for an indeterminate period of time, depending on the crimes that they committed during their life. The first level concerns judgment, where spirits are sentenced depending on their crimes. The other levels of hell correspond with different sins, and the punishments are tailored to each. For example, the second level is reserved for corrupt officials 
who are beheaded repeatedly on a tiger guillotine. Another example is the 11th level, where thieves, kidnappers, and fraudsters are crushed by a grindstone. Depending on the sins committed throughout their lives, a person may go through any number of levels. However, at the end of their journey, after their sins have been punished out of them, they are given an elixir of forgetfulness, and are then reincarnated. For those who have achieved enlightenment, the exhibit also seems to contain scenes of paradise, in which enlightened individuals break the cycle of reincarnation and live among the gods. At least, that's my understanding of it as someone who knows very little about religion and philosophy in East Asia. The exhibit itself is absolutely fascinating in its content matter, and as someone who has a personal affinity for lower budget animatronics and set design, which have a certain type of specific charm to them, I really like what I'm seeing here. It very much reminds me of a lower budget roadside haunted house you would find somewhere in the United States. However, I've discovered that this type of attraction isn't actually as unique as it appears. So, let's explore further. Located in Singapore, Hall Par Villa was originally established as Tiger Bomb Gardens, named after a medicinal product invented by the father of the two brothers who founded the park, Al Boon Hall and Al Boon Par. It opened in 1937 with a villa and exhibits meant to teach about Buddhist, Confucian, and Taoist mythology. However, the Japanese inhabited the villa during World War II, and afterwards it was demolished. Following the Japanese defeat in 1945, the land was established as a public park, though Boon Hall commissioned statues and dioramas that taught Chinese mythology and values. Through the decades, the park would go through a number of owners, aiming to revitalize its aging displays, and today, the outside portion is free, allowing visitors to experience a number of exhibits relating to Chinese mythology, as well as Buddhism and Taoism. However, of most notable interest is the Museum of the Ten Courts of Hell, a similar attraction to the one found at the Madu Dacian Temple. The museum begins with a short video, chronicling the development of religions throughout East and West Asia, highlighting their differences and speaking about different interpretations of the afterlife. Once exiting this portion, a number of exhibits explore these interpretations further, before eventually bringing visitors to an indoor building, which portrays the Ten Courts of Hell. While similar, this interpretation has a number of distinct differences from the exhibit at the Madu Dacian Temple, if you study them closely. It's my understanding that this particular interpretation is a bit older, as the 18 courts of hell were later adopted during the Tang Dynasty. While this exhibit does not contain any animatronics, and is not as gruesome as the one previously mentioned, it still is quite the interesting experience. In conjunction with all the outside exhibits portraying various stories and mythology, Hall Par Villa definitely seems like an intriguing place to visit. Of the parks located in Asia though, the most interesting is definitely Suitin. Translated as Fairy Stream, Suitin is located in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam, and is designed as a Buddhist theme park. While intriguing, I will say that the park does seem like a bit of a mess though. It's massive and contains a number of different areas, including one with a number of unthemed and nauseating looking fly rides. The park also contains a roller coaster, appropriately named Roller Coaster, which might just also have the most comically slow lift hill I've ever seen. Once it eventually gets going, the track layout is an unremarkable series of small hills that the train slowly crests over, making me wonder how often it must inevitably valley and get stuck on the track. When walking around the grounds, visitors will find a ton of gardens, as well as massive sculptures and beautifully designed temples scattered throughout, which certainly reinforces the Buddhist theme. However, the park does contain a number of other interesting attractions as well. Snow Castle appears to be a snow-themed indoor building with ice slides. The park also offers the Crocodile Kingdom, an attraction that reminds me quite a bit of Gatorland, as you can dangle raw meat in front of hundreds of crocodiles to feed them. Another attraction is the Fairy Phoenix Palace, which seems to describe the building and not the actual ride. 
It is itself an indoor dark ride where riders board a raft that spins on the water. The ride seems to consist of a journey through the jungle, where riders will encounter a number of jump scares with an animatronic gorilla, and will face perilous obstacles such as crocodiles or jungle tribals. I'm not sure what the ride is intending to convey, or if it has any religious connection, but it is at the very least quite interesting. However, I believe that it was more recently converted into a walkthrough attraction that is more akin to a cheap haunted house, filled with motion detector jump scares as people move along the old ride track. It's difficult to tell what I'm looking at, as so little information on this park exists, but I believe that this is still the same building. The park also seems to contain a number of other bizarre attractions, such as the Magic Castle, another haunted house walkthrough filled with jump scares, but themed to Harry Potter. I'm quite sure that this is unlicensed, but that's part of what makes it so interesting. Another attraction is the Artifact Gallery, filled with fossils and curiosities, such as preserved animals with extra heads and appendages. I'm not sure if these are real or fabricated, but it's disturbing all the same. There is also the Tunnel Through the Ground, which starts with you entering an elephant-shaped structure, but turns into a dark ride. Once you board, the vehicle brings you through what I believe is an ancient Egyptian tomb. Towards the end, riders travel through a scene that I presume represents the Egyptian Duat, a realm where souls would be judged. So. Does that count as a religious-themed experience? While I haven't really spoken much about it yet, the park does contain a number of experiences that do link to Buddhism. Most prominent of these is the water park, which uses actual seawater and is flanked by sculptures that represent Vietnamese mythology and history. It's difficult to find information on what exactly this all relates to, though I am under the impression that it does link back to Buddhism in some form. Another haunted house style walkthrough is the Secret of the Koloa Citadel, filled with motion triggered effects and even staff inside who will grab at your ankles. While I'm not entirely positive if this experience is related to the Buddhist conception of hell, I am under the impression that it probably is, but again, information is difficult to come by for this park. However, I can definitively say that there is one attraction that does relate to this. The Unicorn Palace is again another haunted house walkthrough attraction, this time taking you through the Buddhist conception of the levels of hell, quite similar to the other attractions already mentioned earlier in the video. What makes this different is that it's full of actual jump scares for the sake of entertainment, but I do love how weird it is. While not all the attractions at Tsui Teen relate to Buddhism, the park's plethora of temples, pagodas, and Buddhist iconography certainly do work to establish this as a religious theme park. Of the attractions I've discussed so far, it's certainly the most intriguing to me. However, I think it's time we finally take a look at one of the most bizarre and controversial religious theme parks thus far. One of the more recent developments in organized religion has been the Christian theme park, the theme being the Bible, and the park having all the excitement and many of the devices of a Disneyland. The one Cassandra Clayton visited in South Carolina is the third most popular theme park in America, five million visitors last year. Heritage USA was the creation of Jim and Tammy Baker, fundamentalist Christians and televangelists who rose to fame in the early 1970s. They originally launched a children's show titled Come On Over in 1965, but Jim would move on from there to host The 700 Club, a Christian variety show on the Christian Broadcasting Network the following year. However, Jim would leave the show in 1973, starting up the PTL, or Praise the Lord Club, the following year, which would grow in popularity immensely over just a short period of time. Having raised millions of dollars over just a few years and adding Tammy as his co-host, the couple would build Heritage USA, which opened in 1978 as a Christian theme park, but would also be the location of their new state-of-the-art studio. As the third largest theme park in the world by attendance, beaten out only by Disneyland and the Magic Kingdom, it sat on 23 acres of land and hosted a number of different activities. 
One of its attractions was a strip of shops called Main Street USA, which embraced what I can only describe as Christian consumerism. These shops would include Christian art, Tammy's own Christian music albums, dolls of biblical figures, scripture-based baked goods, and a variety of other items. The park was designed to evoke feelings of attending a high-budget Christian summer camp, offering church services, Bible studies, spiritual counseling, faith healing, and even a campground with a variety of activities such as tennis and horseback riding. For those who wanted a more comfortable stay though, the property did contain the lavish 501-room Heritage Grand Hotel. Attractions were not very prominent, though there was both a carousel and a train ride around the property. The largest attraction was easily the water park though, which was built for $12 million in 1986, and was I think intended to fit into the idea of an expanded summer camp. Concerning entertainment, the park also included a Christian dinner theater and a Jesus Passion play, chronicling the last days before his crucifixion. It's also very much worth mentioning the Christmas celebration known as Christmas City, occurring seasonally every year and dressing the park up in Christmas lights while also hosting a nightly parade. Over the course of its existence, the Bakers reportedly raised and spent over $175 million dollars developing the property that also included their studio and a residential area for 1,200 residents. There was at one point plans for major expansion, including more hotels, as well as a partially built castle that would have included an arcade, a go-kart track, and the world's largest Wendy's. However, major financial trouble would hit the Bakers when a number of gym scandals came to light. The first is that the park offered what it called lifetime partnerships, a program where patrons will pay $1,000 to spend three free nights at the hotel every year for the rest of their lives. The issue is that these memberships were oversold, which exceeded the capacity of the hotel, an issue that park management was very well aware of. The next and more egregious scandal will be phrased oddly because of the YouTube algorithm, but it was revealed that Jim engaged in a non-consensual intimate relationship with a church secretary who he had drugged paying her hundreds of thousands of dollars in PTL funds to buy her silence. Among this, the Bakers decided to step away from the PTL, appointing televangelist and icon of hate Jerry Falwell as the interim leader of the institution. In order to do so, Falwell began a fundraising campaign to acquire the now debt-ridden PTL, raising $20 million and promising to ride down the park's water slide known as the Typhoon. As a televised event, millions of people were able to witness him whimper in protest as he decides to slide down fully clothed in a suit down into the pool below. However, after Falwell acquired the PTL, he betrayed Jim and began to work with other evangelical leaders, prodding further into Jim's crimes. In 1988, Jim was then indicted on 15 counts of wire fraud, 8 counts of mail fraud, and 1 count of conspiracy. He was then sentenced to 45 years in prison, though only served five, and still makes prominent public appearances today. However, attendance for Heritage USA dropped as these scandals arose, and after Jim was indicted, the tax-exempt status of the park was revoked, eventually seeking bankruptcy as it was $72 million in debt. Since then, the park has gone through a number of owners which have all tried to revive it in one form or another. Today though, the park has been redeveloped for mostly housing and commercial purposes, though a few remnants still exist. I think that a fundamentalist evangelical park is very much controversial on its own, or at least it would be today, but within the context of Jim's scandals and the betrayal by Jerry Falwell, I think its reputation as a saga of sin is well deserved. I can't say that the park itself was actually that interesting as it had almost no rides and the activities weren't anything particularly unique that you couldn't find elsewhere. Still, no other Christian park has been so prolifically scandalous, and the story behind it is certainly worth knowing. I occasionally like to produce videos like this, taking a look at the more niche areas in the realm of theme parks. 
The video production is itself very much a learning opportunity, and this one has been no different. Hopefully, you've learned something about the history of Christianity with sacred mounts, working as precursors to themed entertainment, or have learned a bit more about other Christian attractions found throughout the world. I also thought that instead of focusing on just Christianity exclusively, the theme of this video would be a great way to explore other religions and philosophies and seeing how they manifest as themed entertainment. I will admit, I was surprised by how often Asian conceptions of hell found themselves as main themes, and I'm also incredibly intrigued by how gimmicky Plain Park appears to be, even if I don't think that it will ever be built. I also love the low-budget haunted house atmosphere of Sui Teen's many attractions, in addition to the rest of the park, which puts it as a place I definitely want to visit if I manage to find the opportunity. Finally, after many requests, we were able to discover the history and controversy of Heritage USA, a park that was ironically taken down by the sins of its owners. Hopefully, the topic of the video was inherently interesting, and at least educational. As I stated earlier, these more niche videos take a lot of time and effort to research, and so you can help it out by hitting the like button if you haven't yet done so. As always though, if you enjoy video essays like these that cover a number of different elements in the theme park industry, I strongly encourage you to subscribe and hit the bell icon so as to be alerted to new videos as they release.